questions intensifying about Joe Biden's ability to continue not just for a second term, but to continue right now to the end of the day. Can he make it? The failure of the debate on June the 27th was not just Joe Biden's inability to function, but it was compounded because Donald Trump challenged Joe Biden and he could not respond. He could not manage a coherent response. And the best two lines came with the Trump punchline hammering home the problem with Joe Biden. Here's one example. Listen. I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40 percent fewer people coming across the border illegally. That's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump. I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look. So true. Donald Trump not really being aggressive, just pointing out the obvious. I have no idea what he said. He doesn't know what he said. The Biden campaign has been in free fall ever since. In fact, it's safe to say that the Democrats have lost every single news cycle since Biden's complete and utter failure June the 27th. Because everyone, everyone saw what happened. You saw it. I saw it. And they saw Donald Trump fillet the defenseless president over and over again. Here's another reminder of how that debate went. Listen. All those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare because all of these people are coming in. They're putting them on Medicare. They're putting them on... What actually happened is Donald Trump, with plenty of help from Joe Biden, beat the Biden campaign to death on June the 27th. And not only has Biden and the Democrats lost every news cycle, like I just said, but... The real problem is now showing up in poll after poll after poll. In fact, there's not one survey of American voters that has Biden winning. Not one. Almost every poll has moved toward Donald Trump since the debate. About two points, some places even more. So the debate was not a knockout punch, not quite, but it was a massive gut punch to the re-election campaign. And everyone knows it except, well, except for Joe. And he refuses to let go, to concede that his days in the White House are over and honestly That should happen right now, not in a few months. It should happen today. But unless he accepts his fate and steps aside, there's nothing the Democrats can do, nothing. Biden has the pledged delegates. And this is truly dangerous because, as you first heard here weeks ago, Joe Biden, I believe, has a form of Parkinson's disease. I said that weeks and weeks ago, but you don't have to take my word for it. You can hear it from people who really know what they're talking about. On MSNBC, for example, A board-certified doctor that specializes in Parkinson's disease gave a blunt and damning assessment of Joe Biden's condition. Listen to this. He has just this classic features of neurodegeneration. I mean, word finding difficulties, and that's not, oh, I couldn't find the word. That's from degeneration of the word retrieval area. He's also overcome stuttering, though. Could, could, that, could that be part of that, too? No, this is not a palatal issue or a speech discrepancy, which is very different from a lemono dysfunction, actual word retrieval, where you pick a similar question or talk around the issue, plus the rigidity, um, monotone voice. Wait, go back to that, the rigidity. What do oh, you mean? rigidity, loss of arm swing, standing up lordotically. You know, when he turns, it's kind of end block turning. It's not a quick turn. Um, so la- la- that's one of the hallmarks of Parkinson's is rigidity and bradykinesia, slow movement. And he has that hallmark, especially with the uh, low voice. He said was a cold hypophonia, s- a small monotone voice like this over time is a hallmark of Parkinsonism. I could have diagnosed him from across the mall. From across the mall. So we all know what's happening. And by now, so do most Americans, but Joe is hanging on, or maybe I should say Jill is hanging on to the power that they have for dear life. So with Joe refusing to leave gracefully, the anger is starting to rise in some corners as longtime supporters and outspoken advocates are calling on Joe Biden to step down, despite his refusal to do the right thing. Longtime critic and Biden supporter And an obnoxious individual, Michael Moore, says the ongoing push to keep Joe in the race, despite what we all know, is wrong. In fact, he says it's worse than that. He says what is happening is elder abuse. 
And here's more. Imagine that was your father up there. What would you want to... I'm thinking, why isn't anybody doing anything? Why didn't they do it? Why did they even let him go out on the stage in this condition? Who was looking out for him? Yeah. Who's looking out for him right now? You know, George asked those questions like I said, and he had to ask it three or four times. Will you just get a checkup, a, a medical evaluation, a, a neurologist, you know, to something doesn't seem right. And we're not doctors, but each of us, all of you watching this right now, have had or have in your life four grandparents and two parents. There's at least six. You've got step parents and step grand. We all have seen the decline of the people we love. All seen the decline of older people is what he means. By the way, speaking of George Stephanopoulos, just saw the tape. I'll get it for you here in a few minutes. Just saw the tape. A guy on the street asked George Stephanopoulos, who's apparently out for a walk. What do you think about Joe Biden? I don't think he can serve four more years, was the answer, the exact answer. I don't think he can serve four more years. George Stephanopoulos, a partisan Democrat, working at ABC News for years now. He's, he's, no, he's no nonpartisan guy. He's a Democrat. He's a liberal. He worked for Bill Clinton. He's worked for Democrats ever since. He just did it from the perch at ABC News instead of inside the administration. He says he cannot serve. Right? Michael Bennett, a senator from the state of Colorado, has now said that he doesn't believe that Biden can serve. The crisis inside the Beltway is growing by the minute. What do they do with Joe Biden? Of course, he had a NATO summit in town yesterday. He's got allies in town. And look, these people knew as well. The news media is known for a long time. George Stephanopoulos is known for a long time. Joe Biden isn't all there. The inner circle for Joe Biden, be it Jill, Hunter, whomever it may be, they've known for a long time. Antony Blinken, Jake Sullivan, they all knew. And they lied to you and to me. And that put this country in danger. So do not dismiss the faults of these people. Kamala Harris knew. She knows. So did the others. They all knew. And instead of telling the truth, they wanted to hang on to power. It was more important to keep power than to do the right thing for this country. Let that sink in. I'm going to repeat that because it's true. They care more about power than they do about America. That's a fact. More after this. It's the Steve Gruber Show.